What's happening, partner? This high end radio. We're hip hop bands. Don't just hear the music, see, see, see the music in action at, at, at theslumpzone.com. Nocturnal is, I was a songwriter. Um, I really never wanted to be in the limelight, but Dr. Dre saw fit to put me out there. Um, his wife is Queen. She was like, he's very marketable, you should put him out. And I didn't even expect that to happen, so uh, we created LA Confidential, and it just worked out. Like, if you think about it, how did Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg make a movie, and I had the lead single, which was Bad Intentions. That's true. It was not my decision to do. Right. And I really wrote that song for Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre, but I was having sinus problems at the time. So that's what the I, I really not. <laughs> and so it was for, the the hook was for Snoop Dogg, and he couldn't do it like that. Dre was like he was just like keep it, keep it like that. We are gonna put it out. So, and with that in mind, and with that song coming out, and with that hook, where you did you get a lot of the uh, oh he's trying to be like Snoop with the look and the of sound. Of course, that's right my little cousin. He's yeah. older than me by four years. Right. You but, you, I mean? but you guys is flowing stuff. It's like, oh, it's the new Snoop Dogg. Yeah. Snoop Dogg ain't dead. How am I? How am I the new Snoop Dogg? I'm nocturnal. Hello. I, I went. I was. A, I went to a store in Texas one time. I don't know if anybody know what the Piggly Wiggly is, but it's a grocery store. A very popular grocery and liquor yeah. store in the Midwest. Yes, so. yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes, yes. And an 80 year old man with a cane said, "You know who you look like." I was like, "No." He was like, "Snoop Dogg and Dog," and he started busting up laughing. I said, well, thank you. My name is Nocturnal. He's like, you a rapper too? I was like, no, nah, don't even worry about it. But thank you for the compliment. Right. You know what I mean? It doesn't bother me. You know what I mean? So, the dog is very successful. Why would that bother me? Have you had a chance to see uh, Defiant Ones? The new, hmm? uh, have you had a chance to see the documentary on Jimmy Iovine and Dr. Yes, Dre? yes. What is your opinion? My opinion on the Defiant Ones is they told a lot of the absolute truth. I was there for it. And what they went through, I was there for it, thick and thin. Right. With the beef, with Shug and all, like, I was there were for you, it. Were you there at the Source Awards when they when they tried to uh, of beat up Dre? It didn't work out so well for them. That part. Yeah. Um, you said this new generation of MC is not uh, uh, not an MC, the, uh, or, or or the new generation of hip hop artists is not a uh, an MC. Um, it's not a master of ceremony. That part. What I want you to do is uh, you know what rap means, recording abstract poetry, and they're not doing that. Elaborate. Okay, abstract poetry is something that you tell a story on, and it's a whole story base. What they're doing is. They're just having verses and they just keep saying the same thing over and over and over again on the hook. And they're not giving you the story. They're just saying, you know, dot, 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 or whatever. Like, it's just like, come on, where's the storyline? Rap is recording abstract poetry. That's like if you call yourself a crip, you need to be from California because it's California Revolution in Progress. If you're from Texas and you call yourself a crip, you need to be called a trip. Cause you're from Texas, like it's a difference. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm just being real. So, explain the importance of writing and publishing as an artist. Um, the importance of that is to get paid first and foremost. Of course, you know you need to register yourself um, with either BMI or ASCAP or Sound Exchange or the Royalty Network. Like these are all networks that is is good for people to actually collect their money. But if you register with all of them, it's even better. Because then they just compete and who's going to get you the bigger check. But my thing is, is, I didn't know that at first. You know what I mean? I was only 22 years young. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't know the importance of what I needed to do. So I was getting worked over. But I'm just glad that God gave me a second chance in life to be able to do what I'm doing. Like, you know, it's not easy having to come back out here and do this again being that I'm 42 years young. But the fun part about it is I'm still a big kid at heart. 
So it, does, it doesn't even matter to me. You know what I mean? It's just like, here I go having fun again. Moving into this digital age where mm -hmm. shit you started with Napster and then so on and so forth. Now you people don't even hardly buy CDs. You don't even make cars with CD players. Right. Explain how that changed for you as an artist and for the company and for just for the business as a whole. This is the reason why I signed with Sony Red is because it's a glo I'm a global artist and so Sony Red is a global, it's the urban department for global distribution, for digital distribution, you know what I mean? And so it actually makes me more money because all I have to do is put out the song and shoot a video and I get my check within 55 to 90 days. So it's fun to know that when I put out a video or I put out a song within 55 days to 90 days, Sony Red and SMG is going to give me a check. So I actually like it more because it used to be a turnaround of a year or like maybe a year and nine months. Now it's just like 55 to 90 days checking the mail. That part. You know what I mean? Describe your relationship with Dr. Dre. Well, first of all, everybody calls me Knock. Every time he sees me, he'd be like, Knock, Knock! I'd be like, who is it? He's like, here you go. And he put on the beat. Uh, when I first met Dr. Dre, I showed up to the studio with my wife. I had just got out of jail, out of the penitentiary. But, um, so I'm sitting there thinking like to my wife, like, what can I, what, what rap should I say to him, what rap? She's like, baby, just be you. So I thought that like, he walked by, I said, damn, he, there you go. You know, I'm getting all like nervous and shit, right? So I'm thinking like he went, maybe he went to the bathroom or something. Come to find out in Larrabee, he was sitting on the other side of the door listening to me rap to my wife about what I wanted to rap to him. So when he called me downstairs to go inside the studio, he said, how many people are in there? I said, I don't know. He said, let's find out. So when I started rapping, he was just randomly changed the beat. Like, and I just kept rapping. And he would change the beat again. I kept rapping. With a different voice though. I would change my style. Every time he changed the beat, I changed my style. He's like, yeah. You got it. He was like, come out the vocal booth. So that, that made me feel good, you know what I mean? It just made me feel like I had a future after doing four years and eight months in jail. It's like, fuck. And then he told me, why didn't you tell me it was your birthday? I was like, nigga, I'm in the studio with Dr. Do you think I give a fuck about my birthday right now and I'm on parole? Are you serious? I give a fuck about my birthday. Nigga, this is, it, this is the best gift I could, I could ever have is being in the studio right now with you. He shut the whole studio down and took me out and just shut down the whole Red Room in Hollywood and just got me a bottle of Louis XIII and said, have some fun. I don't want to tell you what he did after that. I'm going to get in trouble. <laughs> but... <laughs> you what know why they let him go? Why let him go? Because he, he, all he did was try to go take his own shit back. True. That's what the appeal was about. How you going this fool got priceless memorabilia and somebody stole it and they put him in jail for it. Let that nigga go. They was mad because they still think that he killed the Jewish bitch, whatever. All I'm saying is, if it don't fit, you must have quit. He, they did he quit. But the, the real part about that is, he didn't deserve that. He was trying, he just, that nigga went, he didn't go ham, that nigga went nigga. And he went to go get his shit back. And then he just so happened to get caught up on camera for it. So he went to jail. That's the reality of what. <laughs> so all for all you niggas that think you're doing something, you better look around before you get to doing something and don't take your phone with you because it's going to snitch on you. you leave your phone. Jay Z's album. What do you think? Love it. You didn't hear him say Birth of New Nation, Nocturnal Style? He knows I'm coming back. The nights at the round table, I know I'm coming back. You didn't hear on his first single with Damian Marley? He said it's going to be a birth of a new nation, Nocturnal Style. It's my turn again. And he just let people know that. Explain to me Eminem's style. Eminem is a jokester. He likes to have fun, he talks a lot of shit, but he's fun.
to be around. But he's also like, it, it's no gray area with him. Either he loves you hard or he's not fucking with you. Like, you know what I mean? I went on tour with them and he had like some blow up dolls that he, he would use for props. I was like, hey man, you taking all the bitches, let me get one of them dogs. He said, yeah, I'm missing a few. I think you already got some. <laughs> He's just a jokester. You hear me? But he likes to have fun. You know, but when he's really serious about something, he, he's serious about his craft. He gets in there and he critiques that shit. He has to work three times harder than any African-American man in the industry to prove his point. And he did it. And that's the way his lyrics came out. You know what I mean? And that's the truth about Eminem. Like, he, he didn't get like, he could just have mediocre lyrics and just be cool or halfway good lyrics and be cool. He had to work three times harder than any African American man. I watched him do it. You know what I mean? And I, and I respect him because he didn't give up. When Dre sent his first video to him, it was in Eight Mile in a trailer park. Dre was like, is this really a fucking trailer park? I was like, I don't know, Dre, it, it, it says trailer park. He was like, fuck that. Dre called him, put him, he didn't even send him the video. Called him and put him on a plane and said, come out here, and Dre got in my house. Before his single even dropped. And people talk shit about Dre, it's because Dre ain't fucking with him. That's why they talk shit about Dre. It ain't because Dre's a faggot or anything. It's because Dre wasn't fucking with you. So now you gotta call him names and shit like that. That man is a very, fair, he's a big ass kid, first of all. Like he has fun. But he's not going to fuck with you if he's not feeling your music, period. Who from the city are you listening to? Kendrick, Nip, who, who are you feeling from? I believe Kendrick paved the way for MCs again with this new album. He grew into himself. I believe with this album he just he just did. He it took him a second. You know what I mean? Like as it should, like anybody that needs to grow. I had to grow. It took me a second. Like I'm not disrespecting anyone. But I believe with this album that he paved the way for people to ride the wave again for actually music where people listen to the lyrics again instead of just the beat. Because what he's saying is impeccable. I mean, I'm just being real. Like, I actually digitally downloaded the shit and bought it. And it's on my phone right now. Okay. <laughs> and, I don't, and I don't do that shit. <laughs> That's the first time I've done that shit ever. But I, because of what he's saying, even when he's saying, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, little bitch, be humble. Mm -hmm. Sit down. He's not just talking to bitches. He's like, it's my turn. All of you motherfuckers, be humble. Sit down. That's a cold statement. He's talking to the world when he's saying that. I know what he means, and that's a cold statement to make. And that shit's number one. And that's how you gotta be when you think about, even if you do plumbing or, or landscaping or anything, you gotta be, you gotta feel like you're the best at what you do to be able to be number one at what you do. He told everybody to hold up and sit down. It's my turn. Basically, that's what the fuck he's saying. I get the metaphor. Now that's recording abstract poetry, that's rap. He's a master of ceremony now. He's not just a hip hop artist. That's what I mean by that. This is what we do, boss. We're bossing. There's nobody in here that's not a boss. So don't come around me if you're not a boss. I'm gonna slap the shit out of you. Yo, it's your boy Nocturnal, and all I really know is I'm chilling with Slump Zone Radio. You know how we get down, West Coast style. Handle it.